All right, so this Saturn uh, has started like a serious misfire problem. I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up and let you hear what it sounds like. Um, I took the O2 sensor out earlier to see if it was an exhaust restriction. Let me see where I put that. Let me put this O2 sensor back in because that made no difference. Okay. That way it'll be quieter for you guys that hear it. All right. So I also, I already like tried uh, different coil packs. I tried different wires, different plugs. Just used ones that I had. And that made no difference either. <laughs> but it has a code for the fuel injectors being too lean. It's had that code for a long time. It's always been a problem with this car. I've never looked at it before to see what's causing it. It has a cam sensor code, but it has passed since it failed or whatever. I'm not too worried about that one. Um, but the cam sensor code would make sense why it has an extended crank. Uh, sometimes when it starts because um, it's having to fall back to the crankshaft position sensor so or if you try to start it and it doesn't get a signal and you take your take the stop trying to start it then try again then it starts right up it's typically a camshaft position sensor that second time it realizes it didn't get a signal so it'll switch over to the crank um but I don't think that's the problem with it not running right. So let me fire it up here. Now we'll go ahead and give it some gas. So it's got a couple errors. One says that the upstream O2 sensor is like at not in an expected range, right? Um, the other one says the fuel injectors are running leaner than they should be. Um, and both of those are probably related, right? So this is out of range because it's not getting enough fuel, is my thought. Uh, so what we're going to do is test the fuel pressure on it. Um, if it's not, it, you know, either that or it's the injectors. Um, so we'll do an injector drop down test if the fuel pressure looks good. Um, so I went out and bought me a new Maddox fuel pressure tester because my junkie Pittsburgh one finally started to shoot more gas than it uh, <laughs> retains for pressure. Um, I got the two-year extended warranty on this one for seven dollars. So if it starts leaking, I'm taking it back and getting me a new one. But this Maddox stuff is usually pretty good. I have pretty good luck with it. Okay, that seems nice and tight now. Uh, this is a. Uh, returnless fuel system so um i don't think it makes pressure just with the key on you have to actually be running the engine so let me let me give her a start and we'll see if she leaks and what the fuel pressure is Very low. Use that. 15 pounds. We'll give her some gas. I mean, she's staying at that pressure, but. We dropped down to about 11 pounds there. 
And now she's running about 12 pounds. That's pretty low fuel pressure. I'm going to look up the specs on it and see what it's supposed to be. All right, so 40 to 55 PSI is what it's supposed to run. It's running like 15 or 14 down to 10 or 11, right? Uh, so it is not getting enough fuel to run right. That's the problem. It's given the fuel injectors are leaner than they should be because it has the fuel trim probably maxed out and it still isn't running right. Um, it's backfiring through the intake, which is a sign of a lean mixture. And, you know, it, it doesn't run right. Um, especially when you just crack that throttle open and it should give it a big gulp of gas. It's not doing it. So, it's a fuel pump. All right, so I looked up my fuel pump relay in the intermediate panel junction box. And I noticed that's going to a positive because this goes to a ground on the control side. So I wanted to energize that relay. I hope my battery holds out. It's got these bulbs in it. This is gonna take a while. Um, but I went to my intermediate panel junction box, put my relay tester in there, and then hook my test light to battery positive. You can see it. I don't know if you can see it on video, but it's about right here and it's been going for three or four minutes. So I'm gonna try to do this to get the gas out of it. And then we'll just change that out, fill up my five gallon can or put this in one of my cars or whatever, then refill it. And we'll try to get as much of the fuel out of this tank as we can, because it's got three quarters of a tank. <clears throat> all right, I got the fuel tank down. I got the fuel pump out and I got all the fuel drained out of it with my pump. Um, this one had kind of a dirty filter on it, but she just was not pumping. In fact, she stopped pumping altogether after I got a couple gallons of gas out. I energized the fuel pump and I would not hear it running. So I think she was on her last leg. So we got the new one here and we're going to go ahead get that installed and uh, make sure it matches and put it put it in and then the tank's empty now so my friend came over and helped me lift it down because it was still a half a tank um, and then we're ready to put it back up in there <laughs> exciting time. Alright, so I got it running. I had to run a temporary wire to the positive for my fuel pump because I shorted something out and blew a few in the night. No more misfire. Let me get my fuel pump uh, pressure tester on there and we'll try it real quick. I uh, blew a fuse or something somewhere. From the diagram, I just see the instrument panel or the uh, intermediate panel fuse here, 30 amps. It's not blown, but I blew something somewhere. I'll have to find it. But for now, I just went ahead, ran a positive wire over, powered up that fuse or that relay, gave it some power down there. So I pumped her up. I started her up. She came up to 50 pounds and she is holding there. So let's start it up again and see. how it goes. Oh, she starts right up too now. She doesn't have that extended cranking problem. That's gone. We're up like 55 pounds. like she fixed but yeah she's holding fuel pressure now see she didn't hold fuel pressure before she was she would just bleed right off 
you didn't hold the eight or nine pounds that she was getting. <laughs> so that should take care of the lean code as well. So this thing's ready to get out of here. You just gotta know how to troubleshoot things. Have some tools to do it and cars are not hard to fix.